In a previous video, I set up a difficulty system where we just have a game state, and on that game state is a property that represents the difficulty. It was an enum, and there's four values here, easy, normal, hard, and very hard. And this is just a raw property on the game state. It's not replicated or anything like that. And so I'd mentioned that in a cup game, you could change it and have it work for other players. And so that was why I chose to do it on a game state. And so this video is going to refactor this so that it's replicated down to all clients, affecting the difficulty on all the clients based off the server's value of the difficulty. So currently that is in begin play, it gets the game state, it gets the difficulty, uses that to change some data and displace the data. And so we're going to convert this to a different setup so that it can replicate down from the server. So let's say we actually did want to make a co-op game and you were able to change the difficulty for all the players. To do that, we need to replicate the difficulty down from the host. So I'm going to refactor some of this to make that work. I'm going to convert this here that reads the difficulty and sets the data to its own function. So we're going to do extract method. So you update difficulty data. Then I'm going to do next. So now we have this update difficulty data. It's a standalone function that is a member function of our actor that has the text here. And I'm actually going to name it to read difficulty data to make it clear that we're not changing anything. Now we need an event to subscribe to for when the difficulty data changed. And we'll put that on the, the game state itself. So make a public delegate. And then in the begin play for the actor, we're going to subscribe to that. So here's our delegate, and we'll add a new object, which is this. We'll make a function to handle when the difficulty changes. So now we've subscribed to that delegate, and then after we subscribe, we just do a, a read to initially set up the data. So we also want to unsubscribe to that delegate just for code cleanliness. So we'll, we'll override the in play. And in in play, we'll grab the game state again and remove from that delegate. I'm just calling the remove all since we know it's the only subscription that we have to that delegate. And so now our actor is hooked up to updates from the game state, but right now the game state is not updating. So what we want to do now is set up the difficulty to be replicated on the game state and then have the own rep call that delegate. So if I go to the game state and we go to the difficulty, we'll change this to be replicated. And set up an own rep callback. And in the own wrap, we'll call difficulty setting updated broadcast. And what we need now is to actually set up the replication. So we'll copy the property, and we need to override get lifetime properties since it's not currently overrided. Okay, with that overrode, generate a body. And now we need to set up the push replication. We'll jump to the parent class to see what that looks like. Right here is do rep lifetime params. Copy that. Go back to the parent game state and we'll just copy this as an example. And replace that with our property that we're replicating, which is the difficulty setting. And the class is no longer game state, but the subclass. And then we need to include our macro. I've included it there in the net and rail network. And oh, I pasted the wrong class. I pasted the actor, but what we want 
is the game state. So now what we need to do is write something to change the difficulty and mark the property dirty. So in the game state, I'll create a setter. Now we probably only want the authority to change the difficulty, so I'm gonna add a check there. So if the authority, so the host effectively, will change the difficulty and then broadcast. But rather than doing the direct broadcast, I'll just call the on rep, which will broadcast for us, and then this right here should replicate to the client once we mark it dirty and call the on rep again. So what we need to do is mark it dirty. So mark which are some examples. Okay, so mark it dirty, and then we'll send this to the CPP file. All right, with that in the CPP file, I believe that's everything. Oh, now we need to actually invoke that somewhere. So we'll set up a console command to do that. We need to convert those arguments to a difficulty. I think the first arg is the name of the command and the second one is the actual argument, but I forget if it's zero. So we'll have to test that at runtime. All right, now I think we can compile that and test it and fix up any issues. So it compiled. Oh, it looks like it was, uh, the arguments was that it didn't include the command as the first argument. So I need to change that to index zero. All right, to test this real quick, we will set our net node to play as client which is going to simulate a dedicated server and connecting to it. And we'll just set this to two for spawning two clients. And we can play. And now we get two connected clients, two windows. And what we can do is type server exec here, which means that it'll run this console command on the dedicated server, as opposed to the client that's typing the command. And we'll do our command here, which is command.compositetable.change difficulty zero which should turn it to be easy. So if we look at the health before we do that, it's 2000. And if I set it to difficulty zero, we see that it updates to 200. And on the other client, it's also updated to 200. So the difficulty is working here. We can change it to various difficulties and they're all updating. Now we can also try the listen server configuration. So this is like Instead of having a dedicated server, this is one of the players is hosting and someone's connecting to it. And so we'll try that with two clients. So one of those is the server and also playing on the server and the other is just connected. Again, if we use the server exec to set it to zero, the health goes to 200 for easy mode. And over here, if we set it to three, again, it goes to 2000. To so we have the replicated difficulty mode working in the listen server configuration, as well as the dedicated server configuration. If we try on standalone, so this is single player. So with standalone, this is effectively single player. So if I set easy over here, we see that it is set to 200, but that didn't affect the other player. If the other player wants to set it to difficulty one, they get difficulty one and they're independent. So it works in single player, listen server configuration and dedicated server configuration. Now, if we change this to place client so that there's a dedicated server, we can just step through the breakpoints. So if we set it to one client, connect to the server and pi, we can go over here and we'll drop a breakpoint on read difficulty. And I'm gonna change it to easy. And so we can see that this is the dedicated server 
and we have set difficulty being called by the lambda in our console command. So it was able to parse the argument, which was zero to an int. And then that int cast it to a difficulty and set that difficulty. And then in this set difficulty, it marked the property dirty. And then it called the on rep, which did the delegate broadcast, which called our handler, which is going to reread the difficulty and then step through here. Now this is all in the dedicated server, so it's not what the client is going to see. But we can see it step through and format the text in the server as well, which we should probably have it not do that since it's irrelevant. But if I continue, we're going to hit this for all of the actors in the level and for the dedicated server. Then we'll see on the client, client one, we are also getting this read difficulty, and that is coming from the replication system here. We've got actor channels calling rep notifies. So we have our rep on rep difficulty setting, which is broadcasting our delegate which our actor is subscribed to, which is reading of the data. And then it steps through the data and asks the game state for the current difficulty mapping, the current difficulty. It overrides the data table row, and then it's going to reread its data. So if it has a text component, it's going to format that string and then set that string onto the text component. And then it's going to do that for all the actors in the level. So I'll remove the breakpoint. And that is how you could easily convert a game state property to be a replicated property for co-op. Also, I do this because I like to help people, so if you know anyone who could benefit from the video, then please feel free to share it with them.